Well, it is, uh, <laughs> drop the time here. It is, uh, February 15th, 2021. It is 17 hours and 4 minutes into the day. It is Monday and we're just getting going. Uh, I did more on the weekend than, uh, I typically do. Uh, it was a way to sort of see, to test myself, and to, see, to sort of push myself forward uh, to new uh, levels, new goals. And I was able to do it, but it comes at a cost that uh, it uh, it slowed down the beginning of Monday. Monday. Uh, uh, switching, uh, switching places, uh, from the sleep to the, uh, wake state it took a little bit longer than expected, and then I had to go through my, basically my, 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 my checking routines. I had to work on, I did do the gaming, uh, the gaming ha takes about, at a minimum, 15 minutes to go through, uh, and then I did some fixing up in the kitchen, I did some, I had, uh, there were some uh, biological functions that had to go on, <laughs> and that took a bit of time, and then I sat back, I m made myself some breakfast, uh, and so now I'm just now finishing uh, out, uh, sorry, getting the rest, into the rest of my day. Uh, on my YouTube stroll, I'm at fi the family, uh, family five logs, and everybody's doing Valentine's Day. And the thing is, you try to catch up on the vlog, you try to catch up on the editing, and you realize that in many cases you fall off, and it just, well, in many cases, it just has to do with level, the levels of fatigue. If you're too too tired to continue uh, on a particular day, and that's how your your schedule is set, is that when you're too tired to continue, you simply go to bed. What ends up happening is that the uh, there are certain things that end up falling off, certain tasks that fall off. So as much as you've caught up uh, in terms of editing the vlogs, you now end up further behind because <laughs> you had to take that time off. And the dreams always, rem the dreams always kind of remind you that as much as you've succeeded, there's that much further to go because they repeat themselves. When you think you've conquered a particular particular view or an understanding, you say, "Oh, I've achieved this." Uh, it plays the dream again, and you're back in the same scenario. And you never finish the dream. You never get to the end of the dream in a any form of in any form of perfection. It just you get to a point that is satisfactory, and. That's not necessarily a success. That's not conquering something. It is a move forward, but at the same time, it is still not what what many people people would consider to be conquered or successful, or what have you. This is more of a uh, well. Every time I go through something, I learn something more, and that's a bonus <laughs> because you're all, you're you're learning from your failure. And this is kind of the way my life goes. That it, things are are far from perfect. They're not far from from being a uh, uh, you know a sheer genius where you you can answer any trivia question no problem. Uh, my mind isn't there for trivia anymore. Uh, it's not about remembering something. It's about understanding the mechanism, and that's a totally different function within the mind. Understanding the mechanism is the observation with the goal of trying to understand what's going to happen next. The, to evolve an understanding of how something functions. And it only comes with enough experience that you ever do succeed to any, some, to any degree. And again, we're going back to quantum mechanics. And we wonder why, how does, how does a scientist, how does the physicist 
end up talking about gnosis? How did they end up talking about dreams? Well, that's because of Max Planck. He's the beginner. He was the beginning point of quantum mechanics. And at his point, it's kind of where science split into two different paths. You had the classical path where people believed everything was fixed and determined. And you had another group who, like, like Planck who said, well, no, the universe is not fixed and determined. We cannot know everything. That there are things that are outside or beyond us in terms of our understanding and logic. And this is where Planck led back into the soul. M theory has, and this is uh, from particle physics, which is a sub derivative of uh, or a sub branch of quantum mechanics, which is uh, deals with the atomic structure, uh, and it opens the door once again for parallel universes. It, 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 you know, the quantum mechanics opens up its own doors of quantum strangeness. Uh, M theory goes even further. In other words, it's like you start here at Planck, and the two points are very close together, and then by the time you move along, there the Two sides are completely, completely divergent. They've moved apart to the point where they're no longer together. And so, Gnosis, the the understanding of the beyond the soul, uh, spirituality. Uh, this is, includes meditation. This is all part of metaphysics. This is all part of metaphysics. And the area should be explored just the way any physicist or any explorer would go out into the wild and sort of do their observation to get an understanding. Well, this is what is being done. That's that's what I'm doing. I'm treating this, the, the, the gnosis and, and, and the path that I'm on, as part of my exploration. It's not outside of the bounds of the exploration in terms of physics. Is this because it's part of, uh, part of, uh, uh, it's not outside the bounds of physics because it's part of physics. It's metaphysics. Just the way you have classical physics, you have quantum physics, you have particle physics, uh, and you have metaphysics. And the thing is, when you go into it, you can expand it further. When you ask, well, how does a physicist know about virology? Well, because uh, viruses are macro macromolecules, and there's something called macro macromolecular physics. It is the mechanics and the functions of macromolecules. And ironically enough, if you go in to look at what, what constitutes virology, it's a portion of quantum mechanics, a portion of macro macromolecular physics, and a portion of uh, quantum, uh, of organic chemistry. And so what happens is that you, instead of studying virology directly, you go into the subcomponents, the things that the virology is made out of. You can go from that perspective rather than through the perspective of biology. And see what's... And because you now have metaphysics, you can add the metaphysics in as well to see how the uh, understanding of the beyond fits in with the understanding of virology. And so one does not disconnect from the other. And the same thing with, 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 with what everyone calls climate. Climate isn't climate, it's uh, atmospheric physics. Uh, your point, if you want to take a look at this and understand, is look at Tesla. And I'm going to leave it at that because I want to see how many people up there screw this run really up. Because I thought, it's about Tesla. And they look at me strange. And they give a typical answer back because there is a common view of Tesla today that is completely incorrect. Uh, less than uh, 20 minutes left in the day of February 16th. That's right, it's Tuesday, February 16th, uh, 2021. It is 
23 hours and 41 minutes into the day. And we're doing our first vlog of the day. Uh, I try to do more vlogging throughout the day, but sometimes that just doesn't occur. Uh, today is one of those days where uh, I just kept putting things off. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've had things to say. I had things to think about. Uh, I just had a long discussion with uh, one of the persons I talk to every once in a, uh, every once in a while. We uh, sort of mull things over and uh, sort of set the direction into which to sail next. And the thing is, is that we we it's the perspective that of how we view life and what we consider to be sorry what we consider to be success and what we consider to be failure. And sometimes, you know, and it's, it's more than simply a phrase that we learn from failure, is that let's do is assume that we fail, we fail. We don't necessarily entirely fail. There's always something to be learned. If you can learn something from failure, uh, then, in increments, as you fail, you take your successes, what you've learned through the failures, and as you add them up incrementally, which is, again, this is calculus, we talk about fractional knowledge, um, the summation over the series of failures can actually be late greater than the initial experience itself. Uh, so in other words, it, the, the failure, the success from failure uh, is a reality in the, in the sense of calculus. Uh, and the, the, when I'm talking about calculus, I'm talking about fractional laws or fr anything that is fractional and it sums up over, over a series, that's fundamentally calculus. Uh, and it, it, it sits within particular ranges. It doesn't have to be one thing or the entire thing. You don't have to consider the entire scope of, of the environment rather just, rather than you just simply look at one aspect of the thing or you took a look at a, a, a section or again or a fraction of something. Uh, so you can take a fraction of a fraction. Take a large project. You're going from point A to point B in this large project. Well, you can fractionalize the, the progress into many sub-steps. And as you complete the sub-projects, you progress along, rather than trying to, to view or envision the entire thing. Now, sometimes envisioning the entire thing, particularly for a project, is uh, enormous. Uh, the project or, or, or the path we walk can, can, be seen, can seem to be monumental that is too large. We're not going to finish it. But whether we set our goals within within the path to uh, something more achievable, you can be satisfied as you move along the path. But, but the problem, the problem that sort of comes in, and this is sort of what comes in with the dreams itself, and this is why dreams in many cases repeat themselves, is that once again you're only having fractional success, and there are periods along the path. Uh, in which you feel bogged down, that you're not moving anywhere. You don't. You see that the overall pace of what you're moving at isn't sufficient. Or this is the point of where you look down and see where you are, and uh, and it kind of frightens you because you realize, okay, yeah, I've gone a long way and really high up, but. Yeah, yeah, well, okay, well, you look up to see how much further you have to left to go. Wow. That looking up, the, the, the assessment of where you are in the totality can be quite diminishing. And this is where you can sort of get into a sense of, well, basically you get into a funk, a, a, a mood of, well, really pessimism because... There's so much further more. There's so much more to do. As far as you know, this comes in with the music room. 
You know, I had the great the great expectations of uh, of bringing in the keyboard and getting it set up and get it go, getting it going, but it turned into a massive project. And it's something that instead of being an immediate project, is now moved off and will be coming in in series of steps. But that's the way things are. That this is how things work, and sometimes you have to accept it, but even though. You, you accept it begrudgingly. And again, you're accepting this. You're accrepting the begrudging rea the begru begrudging reality simply because in many cases you have no other choice. There is no out other than going forward. So you just sort of, okay, well... But that doesn't necessarily mean that the emotions that you have with the situation that's going on has been resolved. So you still have that conflict. And that conflict, the the unease that your that your your soul is in, because anything you're talking about the psychological state, well, the psychological state is the state of the soul. So, see, he, the psych part, is the soul. That it literally means soul. So when you look at the, the state your soul is in, and you see that there's a perturbance within the soul. A, a, a disturbance, a, an issue. Uh, if you are a person like myself who is a lucid dreamer, then it's going to follow you into your dreams. The perturbance will be there and be represented in whatever you're dreaming about. And the, the, the emotion will present itself in a scenario that will say, well, okay, well, how are you going to figure this one out? How are we? And then part of the figuring out is, is figuring out how you feel about the particular issue that, that that's in front of you, that that's perturbing your soul at that at that time, and as much as you resolve it in the dream, assuming you do resolve it in the dream, because uh, sometimes you don't resolve it or you resolve it, and more often than not you resolve it partially, but that you never actually fully resolve it. It just simply it resolved in a part sort of way, and then. This is where it comes back again, maybe a month, two months later, because you're back in another situation that sort of brings up the same emotion, triggers the same emotion. Well, now how do you feel about it? And this is it. As you go from event to event to event, and a lot of times there's the same emotions, but in different scenarios, different events, uh, applied in different manners. And it's how you manage your understanding, how you ma and this is your, your, your spiritual understanding, your uh, emotional understanding. It is not necessarily an intellectual thing, it's, it, it is an emotional understanding, and the, and the emotion more often than that overrules what the logic is, and this is what, what a panic, the, 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 what, we're, what we're seeing today. We're asking, well, why people are like this? Because the panic, regardless of the logic of the situation, is a lot more powerful than the logic. It doesn't matter what the person knows. It matters what. It, it doesn't matter what the person knows. It matters how the person feels, what their state of the emotion, what the psychological state is, what the soul, what the state of the soul is. If there are many perturbances within the soul, then the person is going to be perturbed. You're going to see these perturbances come out into the physical form, into the their physical manifestation. Well, I'll give an example, a person who's highly stressed. What happens? Hypertension. Then comes cardiac arrest. These are all manifestations of a spiritual condition. 